girl out of the car. Right, get her out. Get her out of the car. Get her out of the car. Hope that your brother didn't let any of those kids get away. Get her in there. Yeah, old county attitude. Have you got any self respect? Look what your brother did to that star! Yeah, he's got no, no pride in his home! Get her in This comparative video essay will be discussing some of the major differences between the original 1974 horror film of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and its 2003 remake. In particular, I will be focusing on the contrast between how the family is represented in each film, as well as the individual character portrayal. The horror genre of the 1970s was significant for its progression of American cinema. It brought around the video nasties and low budget gore. However, by the time of the millennium, original horror film ideas were sparse, birthing the rise of the remake. Professor David Roche states that the original horror movies are more disturbing and better than their remakes. However, I want to explore whether this is always the case. The original introduces us to the Sawyer family, a group of murderous cannibals who used to be in the slaughterhouse business, but due to the economic crisis of the 1970s, they resorted to cannibalism in order to avoid starvation. The Remix family are called the Hewitts. They work at the slaughterhouse, but are still cannibals, and there are more generations of them living on the farm. However, in this version, some of the character names have been changed, as I will go on to discuss. In terms of how horror is created, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre plays on the idea that the family as a whole is the key to the horrors that occur. The remake, on the other hand, takes a different approach, suggesting that key individuals of the family such as Leatherface and the Sheriff, are the dictators and creators of the horror, and the family members just cooperate. Sally Hardesty features in the original as the last survivor or the final girl, a term coined by Carol J. Clover. It refers to the last female character who experiences the horrific torture from the villain, but inevitably escapes and lives to tell the tale. She's portrayed as being a mix of whiny and naive, a stereotypical female character for a slasher film. However, there is a sense of bravery to her character, throwing herself through a window in order to escape. Her getaway was more of a case of luck rather than fighting off her attackers, as she just outruns the villains. The remake renames this character as Erin, who is a much more heroic and violent representation of the final girl. Throughout the film, on several occasions, she uses a makeshift weapon for self-defense, unlike in the original. She is seen as a lot stronger and braver than any of the other teenagers, as she manages to injure Leatherface, as well as run over the sheriff, making sure he was dead. This illustrates how brutal she was. There's a sense that we strive more for the remake's final girl, as she is much more courageous and heroic in her escape, and even seeks revenge on the villains who killed her friends. I, I don't know, man. We're in pretty much of a hurry. The teenagers in both films are stereotyped as hippies who are seeking help. In the original, they were on a quest for fuel. Due to the time setting of the 1970s, there was a gas shortage. The remake, on the other hand, shows the teenagers trying to speak to the police after a suicidal girl takes her own life in the back of their van. Each scenario leads them both to an unfortunate fate at the hands of Leatherface. Take a couple of deep breaths. You, you, you can have dinner with us. You like head cheese. 
My brother makes it real good. You like it. The hitchhiker in the original film is soon found out to be part of the Sawyer family, Leatherface's brother. There is iconography of death and taxidermy throughout the whole film, especially in the house, but the hitchhiker's character is undoubtedly the most fascinated by it. When picked up by the teenagers, he shows disturbing photographs from the slaughterhouse and randomly attacks Franklin for his entertainment, cutting him with a straight razor. It is also discovered that he is a grave robber who likes to photograph and make horrific statues out of the corpses in the cemetery. He is run over by a lorry driver. Although this is an accident, it is very lucky for Sally as this is how she makes her escape. The remake on the other hand also has a hitchhiker character. However, she is actually a survivor of the Hewitt family. Due to the trauma from the horrors she experienced, we witness a graphic scene where she commits suicide. Whether she was determined never to go back or couldn't bear reliving the memories, we will never know. In the original, Drayton Sawyer is the cook and brother of the hitchhiker and Leatherface. However, he acts more like a father, appearing older and more authoritative. He owns the gas station where the teenagers first encounter him. This is also the setting where he beats Sally unconscious and brings her back to the house to die. He has a malevolent disposition as he switches between personalities. He is either empathetic towards Sally, being disgusted at what he and his family are doing to her, or he is actively excited by torturing Sally. This illustrates that his character was clearly mentally unstable and most probably suffered from schizophrenia and split personality disorder. In turn, this only adds to the disturbing nature of the film. Charlie Hewitt, also known as Sheriff Hoyt in the 2003 remake, is the driving force behind Leatherface's murders and the family's cannibalism. He is an ex-prisoner of war camp member where he developed his taste for human flesh. He is an extremely violent character who regards murder as no different from the slaughterhouse. He abuses his power from being a fake authoritative figure, luring the teenagers to their death. I'd have blow your fucking brains out right now, asshole. Get out of the van. Both the sheriff from the remake and the cook from the original have very similar personalities. Both are mean, spirited, abusive and deranged yet both are heavily reliant on the rest of their family to survive. The grandpa in the original is an 137 year old corpse who used to work in the slaughterhouse. However, due to the mechanization of the abattoirs, he saw it as a shameful way to butcher animals and in turn retired. Although from his appearance, he may look to be dead. However, he has seemed to survive all these years from drinking human blood. He is a rather bizarre character without any dialogue. However, he does establish that the murderous and cannibalist lifestyle of the Sawyer family has been taking place for many decades. Does anybody care about me and my boy? The grandma in the remake, also known as Luda May Hewitt, is the mother of Sheriff Hoyt and the adoptive mother of Leatherface. She was the homemaker and only cook in the family, which is a similar character to the cook in the original, owning a gas station where the teenagers encounter her. Being one of the only female characters in the Hewitt family, she was very protective over Leatherface. Seeing his torture and murder as justice for being bullied in his childhood years because of his appearance. Although she doesn't care who he takes his vengeance out on. From this we can see that she is supportive and basically promotive of his murderous behaviour, illustrating a lack of morals in the household. Leatherface in the original is represented as a demented and heartless character who treats his murder victims as his family would treat slaughterhouse meat. We are allowed to see his complete costume and handmade human skin mask in natural daylight. This is due to the film being shot in 16mm. It is significant, as in some ways this makes his character less scary, as we the audience are left with little to our imagination, except what lies under his mask. Leatherface in the remake is represented as just as sinister and evil as in the original. However, we discover more about his past, especially his difficult childhood and how his appearance is due to a skin condition. This explains why we see his vulnerable side in scenes. He seems to hide in the shadows the majority of the time, conforming to the film's dark, moody lighting. Contrasting with the original, this Leatherface uncovers his deformed face, revealing his missing nose. 
Overall, they present very different depictions of the character. However, they each encapsulate how apathetic and abnormal Leatherface is, as he systematically kills strangers without emotion or consequence. To conclude, both the original and the remake use different characters to represent the unsettling nature of the family of murderous cannibals. The original is more disturbing than the remake, due to its low budget quality and natural lighting. Leatherface and his family cannot hide in the shadows. The remake, however, is more dramatised, creating a more realistic and frightening viewing experience. Overall, although some people argue that the remake or adaptation is never as good as the original horror film, I would stand to argue that they can provide an alternative and equally disturbing and frightening version of the narrative, as well as add to the film, creating even more horrific characters. Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! Ah!